So welcome back to computational genomics. I want to give you a little bit of an overview of genome sequencing before we get into the specific parts of it. Before we talk about actually how we sequence the genome, I just want you to think a little bit about the end goals of sequencing genomes. Where do we want to get to? What does it mean to have sequenced a genome? Now, in most cases, but not all cases, bacteria have a circular genome. There are certainly exceptions to this rule, but for the purposes of the class, we're going to work with circular genomes. So you can think about the bacterial genome as being a complete circle that basically doesn't have a start or a stop, right? It's joined up. Of course, the bacteria has a way of knowing where the beginning and the end is so that it can make a copy of the genome. But for our purposes, it's a complete circle. Now, most bacteria have maybe a single circle for the genome, which is a large circle, and maybe a few smaller circles that we call plasmids. Some bacteria, and a most notable example of this, is Vibrio cholera. Cholerae, the bacteria that causes the disease cholera, actually has two circles for its genomes. They're both larger than we would consider for plasmids, and the reason that we consider them both to be genomes is that both of these circles contain regions of DNA, genes on them, that are essential for the bacteria to grow. The difference between a chromosome and a plasmid is that plasmids can largely, can largely be removed from the cell without any effect on growth of the cell. Now, it depends exactly how you measure that, what conditions you're using, and so on. But um, we consider the chromosome to contain essential genes that are required for, the, for growth, and plasmids to contain largely disposable genes, maybe accessory genes, that are only required in some conditions. When we talk about the genome, what we actually are talking about is the entire complement of chromosomes, maybe one chromosome, maybe more than one chromosome, and plasmids. And we consider that to be the whole genome for a particular cell. A little bit later in the class, we'll talk about pangenomes, which is where we're comparing genomes from different organisms. So when we're talking about genome sequencing, what we're talking about is understanding the entire genetic makeup of a single cell, 